All right, so here's your comet position update for 2019 Y1 Atlas, 2019 Y4 Atlas, and 2020 F8 Swan. And I've made all of these with the skylive.com, that interactive planetarium, which I keep plugging because it's wonderful. You plug the item in, you plug the time of day, you plug the location, and it'll show you what's available. So what I did this time is a little bit different because the weather next week is a little sketchy. Keep in mind that the UTC time is not the same thing as Eastern Standard. So these are on Eastern Standard Time, and this particular set is at 8 o'clock. So on the 20th at 8 p.m., keep in mind the sun is still up at this point. Here's your western sky. Here's your northern sky. And all three comets are technically visible at this point, and they're going to be getting brighter. But the weather is sketchy enough next week on the forecast that I'm not sure which day is going to be actually the best viewing. It looks like Friday is going to be partly clear. Saturday is going to be crystal clear skies, but we don't know. But there's something going on that I want you to see, and you'll see it in the sequence of pictures. So here we go. Here is F8 Swan. Here is Atlas. Here is Atlas. And so our guider points that we're looking for, here is Polaris, the North Star, and there's the little bear, the little dipper. Here is Ursa Major, the big bear, the big dipper. Here's Gemini, the twins. Here is Cassiopeia, the crown. And here is Venus. And here's Mercury. Mercury is usually only six degrees away from the sun at any one time. So we're going to get to see something fun happen here. And over here, here's the shoulders of Orion. So you really have to use Venus as your reference point. And Venus is incredibly bright because Venus waxes and wanes just like any other object with the shadows of the other celestial objects coming into play. And the fun thing with Venus is the brighter it gets, the less of it is actually visible. But so here's the 20th at 8 p.m. Venus, Mercury, which you can barely see, there's Atlas, there's Swan. Okay, yeah, the sun is still up. But let's advance one day and look to see what happens. Look at the position of Venus and Mercury, okay? And notice the position of the two comets. You're not really going to get to see them yet, but you might be able to get to see Venus and advance another day, advance another day, and advance another day. Notice how the two of them went past each other. And that's just because of the way the orbits work with Venus and Mercury because they're interior planets meaning they are between us and the sun versus the exterior planets, which are beyond us compared to the sun. But notice they're doing that swing around, and that's because Venus is in the process of setting in the western sky, and then eventually it's going to start rising in the eastern sky because Venus is referred to as the evening star and the morning star. You hear everything about Egyptian culture, and they, were, they always quoted the I am the morning star, I'm the um, evening star for the pharaohs, they were actually referring to Venus. They didn't realize that Venus was a planet, not a star, but because it was so bright, it was one of their major reference points. But we'll see it in the morning sky, and a couple of months later, it'll be in the western evening sky. And so we're in the process of it moving around. Okay, so we're going back to our sequence of pictures. We're back to the 20th, but this is now at 9 p.m. The sun has just set, and the sky is just started, just dark enough that we can start to see the stars. So here's your western point. Here's your northern point. There's Venus and Mercury. There's Cassiopeia's crown. There's Polaris, your um, wheel star, and Ursa Minor, you know, the little bear. And here is Ursa Major, the big bear, the big dipper. Here is Gemini, the twins. Here's the two shoulders of Orion. And here is Venus, which you can really see really brightly. And Mercury, which it really does take binoculars, a telescope to see Mercury. And so you'll notice the position of the three comets. So here is Y1. We're caught in the middle of Ursa Major, the big dipper. And then here is Y4. And here is Swan. Okay, 
Swan is bright enough at this point that you should be able to see it without a telescope. These two, the magnitude didn't develop like they thought it was going to, so they're still telescope binocular comets. But okay, so here is the 20th at 9, advance one day, the 21st at 9, and then advance another day, advance another day, advance another day, and there's another day in the sequence. Notice that SWAN is rising while the Atlas Y4 is in the process of setting. So it's soon going to be at the point where we're not going to get to see it. It's not a problem because it looks like SWAN is actually going to develop into a much nicer comet for viewing. And you'll notice that Y1 is heading up across the dome of the sky, which means it's heading directly above you at this point. Okay. So what we're doing is advancing another hour. And so 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock to midnight really is the time period for best star viewing. I know it starts to get a little late, but the sky is dark enough now that we can really start to see some features. So what I've done is gone back to that initial date, the 20th, it's now 10 o'clock at night. And you'll notice that Venus is almost set at this point. Here's your Western sky, here's your Northern sky, and there's Venus. And so here's the crown of Cassiopeia, here's your North Star and Ursa Minor, the Little Dipper. And here is Ursa Major, the Big Dipper. And here is Gemini. And Orion is now out of our sky at this point. So at this point, our swan is just at the horizon. And depending upon your land features, you might not see it. Atlas Y4 is right there in that same danger zone as well because they're really close to the level that Venus happens to be. So you may or may not see it on that day at that point, but there is Y1. So just like with the other series, we're gonna advance days this time. So there's the 20th at 10. Here's the 21st at 10. And the next day, the next day, the next day. And here's the next day in that sequence. And so Swan is close to the horizon, but still high enough that you should be able to see it because we can see those other stars around it at this point. And notice here's Mercury and there's the position from Venus. It really is in that transition phase. And this is about as far as Mercury ever really does get away from the sun at any one time. And so here's the last sequence for this video set. This is 11 p.m. on May 20th. And so here's the western sky and here's the northern sky. And you'll see that Atlas has set at this point. There's Gemini the twins. There's Cassiopeia's crown. There's Polaris and the little bear the little dipper here is the big dipper ursa major and so this is our 11 p.m viewing now we're going to advance one more day one more day one more day you'll see that swan is there at the horizon there's the 24th at 11, and there's the 25th at 11. And so we have to watch and pick when we wanna go do our viewing. You'll notice the moon started creeping up through this whole thing, and so we're starting to get a little bit slivers of the moon larger and larger in the series. And your Y1 is coming this way in the process. Swan is doing one of these, and Y4 is doing one of these. So you really have to go out and pick your day and plan your time period because these guys do shift around. Keep in mind that they are wheeling around our northern star, Polaris. And while they're not necessarily wheeling with the stars, they are shifting position because we are rotating and they are flying in towards the sun and then back out again. 
So this is the sequence that you have for next week over, you know, pretty much the whole week. Just go out and try to come up with a night that you can go and do that star viewing because they are saying that the F8 Swan is really going to be beautiful, especially since it's visible right now without the aid of a telescope or binoculars, which is a really special thing. And the Y1 and Y4 just didn't do what they were expecting, but that's science. We take the information that we have and we try to extrapolate and come up with what we think is going to happen. It just didn't develop like they were expecting, but it's still beautiful and pretty enough to go out there and if you can spot it in the sky, go look at it. So there's your update. I will give you an update next week for sky positions.